this is Griffith's electrodynamics problem 2.35. So <coughs> if we remember from problem 2.34, we used three different ways, it took a long time, we used three different ways to calculate the energy of a uniformly charged solid sphere, radius big R, and uh, total charge little q. So we're going to do a fourth way here in uh, problem 2.35. So just a, a refresher, I saved the last page of the previous problem, and basically this was the answer that we got. 3 fifths, 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught, q squared over big R. So this is what we're going to, to show the fourth way. All right. So, um, so he compares it to a snowball. We're bringing in a, a little bit of a charge. We're going to test some charge dq from far away and we're going to put it uniformly over the surface and increase the radius. So how much work does it take to build up the radius by an infinitesimal amount of dr? And we're going to integrate this to find the work for the entire sphere. <coughs> so um, let's just uh, start putting a few things on paper. So um, we're going to First, let's look at an infinitesimal charge, dq. Um, it's a uniformly charged sphere, so this will just be equal to the charge density times the volume uh, that we're looking at. So charge density, we'll use rho. And we're going to be, like I said, layer by layer, we'll be building up this sphere. So the volume is just the area of the sphere. So surface area, 4 pi r squared. And then to make it a volume, we have this infinitesimal increase in the radius. So what this is right here is just the volume of a thin spherical shell of radius little r and thickness of dr. All right, so what is our rho? Because he doesn't give us rho, or he doesn't put the problem in terms of rho, so he uses q. So let's uh, get back to q. So rho is just the charge over the volume. So here's the charge of the, the whole charge of the sphere over the total volume of the sphere, which is 4 thirds pi big R cubed. All right, so this is what rho equals. Um, <coughs> so. Now, uh, for this dq, when we plug in, plug in the row, uh, we're going to get a, a 3 and a q. And then these 4 pi's are going to take, take each other out. We have a little r squared and a big r cubed on the bottom. OK, and that's it. Now we just have to multiply it by Okay, so this is what dq is. So now let's look at how much work does it take to bring in this little piece of, this little amount of charge, dq. Well, it is whatever the potential is that we're bringing it to. So we're bringing it from infinity to a, a, a surface in space that's all at some constant potential because of symmetry surface will be at a constant potential and we multiply that by the infinitesimal charge okay so now um, just real quick let's figure out what V was so we have here's our infinitesimal charge and uh, V let's see we are, let's see, what are we doing here? We have to know how much charge is there already, right? So let, let's write this out real quick. Um, the V is going to be one Q, but I'm gonna make this a Q prime for now. 
and then uh, a four pi epsilon naught and a little r, <coughs> okay, whatever that is on the bottom. Now q prime, that's how much charge is there already, okay? So um, there's a, oh, this is a dq. All right, so we, we just want to know how much charge is there already. And uh, what this is, is um, it's just, so, so we know how much charge is going to be in the full sphere of radius big R. And we're at some, some intermediate level where we have a smaller piece of this. And so the ratio of the charge is just going to be the ratio of the two volumes because it's uniform charge density. So basically we'll be having the ratio of the two volumes, which the, the four thirds pi part will, will divide out. And uh, so it's just the ratio of the cubes of the radiuses, all right? So basically it's an R cubed over big R cubed and then times the the total charge of the full sphere, right? So basically all we're, all we're looking at here is, again, how much charge is there already because that determines how much, at what potential we're at when we bring this, this infinitesimal charge into the sphere. What potential are we bringing it to? So that depends, that potential depends on two things, the radius that we're bringing it to here and how much charge is there already. So how much charge is there already? Again, just the ratio of the two volumes of this little sphere that we're building up versus the volume of the big sphere. I hope that makes sense. It's, it's um, yeah, probably beating a dead horse here, but okay. So now I'm just gonna plug this Q prime in, in here. So, So we have a 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught from here. Then we are going to plug in r cubed over big R cubed times q. Okay, and then we have this 1 over r, and we have a dq. Okay, and So 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught. And uh, so, so far what we have is 1q here, two little r's on top, power of 2, a big R cubed. Okay, so now let's plug in for a dq, right? Which is what we found right up here. So here we'll have a 3 little r squared over big R cubed dr. All right, let's get this into the final form uh, before integration, gather everything together. I'll leave the 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught out front. Um, we have a 3. We have q squared. We have r a big R to the sixth, okay, on the bottom. Now we just need the little r's, so that's a little r to the fourth power dr. Now we'll just integrate. So the work for this, building the sphere all the way out to radius big R, so we're going to integrate this from little r zero out to little r equals big R, so the, the whole sphere out to the radius big R. Um, one over four pi epsilon naught, uh, three q squared over r to the sixth, and then we have an r to the fourth dr. This is all constants and they can be taken out of the integral.
All right, so now we just have this r to the fourth that we have to deal with. And again, our lower limit of integration is zero. So basically, and uh, this is all we have. So we'll just plug in for big R, but we have to raise to the fifth and divide by five. All right, so our final answer will have a three fifths. So it's looking familiar, which is good. Three fifths, one over four pi epsilon naught from up here. Three fifths, one over four pi epsilon naught. We're going to divide by r to the fifth and get rid of all but one power of r on the bottom. And then we have a q squared on the top. Here's our final answer for this method, and if we compare it, so this is the last page of the, of the problem 2.34, right? Three-fifths, three-fifths, one over four pi epsilon naught, matches up, q squared over big R. We're all good. We got the right answer. So this was a fourth method of finding the total energy of the charge configuration, a uniformly charged uh, sphere with radius big R and total charge little cube.